Alright, howdy folks, welcome back to Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween, sorry about the delay, but we're back with uh, more West Craven Week, we're on Scream 2, the follow-up to uh, Scream. Oh yeah, hold on, okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, Scream 2 is the further adventures of Sidney Prescott after the, uh, the Woodsboro killings in Scream 1. In high school, Sydney has moved on to college yeah. and is now, you know, all jaded and cynical and has to deal with people trying to, for some reason, make fun of her tragic past. And coeds. When a new killer shows up that happens to be sort of copycatting the original killings, which have been turned into a book, which has been turned into a movie called Stabs, so now there's a self-referential loop of meta formed in the Scream series. So Sydney tries to deal with college a little bit until eventually she just has to confront the killer, who turns out to be Billy Loomis's mother, who's been posing as this crazy local reporter pestering uh, Gail the entire time, and some rando from film class. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they kill Randy, which sucks, but uh, Sydney makes it. And so our survivors at this point are basically Sydney, Dewey, and Gail. Yep. Who has now actually reformed a slightly better uh, relationship with Dewey. Please tell me the whole rest of Scream is Saga of Gail. Ah. Oh, okay. So, what we liked about it. Well, it's a Scream movie, so you're not going to get too much. I mean, it's a Scream movie. It's fun. Uh, I guess what I liked about it was um, I liked the college setting a lot more than I liked the high school setting of the first movie. Um, I think it gave Sydney a lot more room to grow as a character, but it also allowed for a lot more overdramatic and r ridiculous stuff like the, the drama scene like on, on the stage. When she had a boyfriend, the boyfriend's a little bit more believable than the high school boyfriend. I don't know. I mean, I just liked the characters a little bit more this movie than I did in the first movie. I thought it was a good continuation of the story, moving the setting into, into college as sort of the next step as the franchise grows up and as Sydney grows up kind of made sense. So Sydney had the caller ID thing going on, but in general she wasn't doing the kind of jaded stereotype. She was moving on, she was in college, and she was a drama major and actually doing stuff, and the movie dealt with that without making the movie sort of about that. Which was kind of awesome. Another thing I liked was that Dr. Foreman was dating Jada Pickett in the beginning of the movie as the black people who die first. <laughs> But it was kind of I like I like their little bit together. It made me happy. All right. So things I didn't like. I really did not care for the final battle. I forgot who Billy Loomis even was. So when it was like I'm Billy Loomis's mom, I was like, ah, okay. But they did kind of hint at that. And then I'm Rando Kid. I remember the dude who was in Fringe more than I remembered Rando Kid from that class, and he didn't even have a name in the credits. So, um, but what I hated the most was the fact that they used guns. I mean, they called the fake movie Stab for crying out loud, and they used guns in the final fight. Guys, come on! And they had some great kills in the movie, and they used guns. These people aren't trained. Guns are easy. So I was probably most disappointed that they actually killed off Randy, because Randy was part of what made the first Scream movie as, I suppose, as influential as it was, because Randy was the meta nerd in the movie. He was the guy who actually pointed out where every single thing was going on. So if Scream 1 was meta, Randy was the meta, and they just kind of killed him off in Scream 2. I mean, it was a great scene. It was really, really well shot, but now you got two more movies to go and you don't have Randy. I'm okay with it. I didn't care for Randy. I thought he was insufferable. I also didn't like in the end, I didn't have a problem with the guns, but I had a problem with who the second killer was, because it made no sense. There were certain elements where once you realize that the killer was Billy Loomis's mom, you could go back and watch when Ghostface sort of gets triggered by things and go, I kind of get it, you know, when Randy insults Billy as beaming like a pussy little mama's boy, and then shank. Or the fact that Randy pointed out that, um... The killer in 
Friday, the first Friday the Thirteenth was Mrs. Voorhees. That was a foreshadowing. It like was the that. mom. Yeah. So. Billy Loomis's mom is a killer was really well foreshadowed, but the random kid from drama class really didn't make any sense. He had one line that was kind of throw in the beginning where he threw some suspicion on Sydney's boyfriend, and then he didn't really didn't do much. He vanished. You know, he was filming everything. Oh, that was the big thing. But you could have very just as well had the killer be the guy from American Beauty just showing up on set. Yeah, I think I would recommend the Scream too. It's one of the better entries in the Scream series. If you're a fan of what the Scream series brings, the kind of slightly meta self-referential humor slash horror, uh, then Scream 2 is definitely fitting of being in there. It's not as good as the first Scream, but Scream 3 is just dumb. So if you didn't get enough Scream in Scream 1, Scream 2, well worth it. Direction, still spot on. I would say skip Scream 1, go straight to Scream 2. You don't even need to know what happens. And Scream 2 is a better movie overall, I think. Um, the characters are a lot more entertaining, and the kills are a lot more fun, too, actually, if I'm being honest. So, yeah, good movie. All right, folks, thanks for joining us on day four of Wes Craven Week with Modern Horrors 31 Days of Halloween. If you like what you see, subscribe below, follow us on Twitter. Um, we'll see you later. Cheers. Spooky, scary skeletons Speak with such a screech You'll shake and shudder Surprise when you hear